This is the first tutorial in electrochemistry. Now, it's really, really important that you understand the real basics of this from the ground up as we go from tutorial one right the way through because the types of exam questions they can ask you can get a little confusing, all right? So we're gonna start here with half cells and what a half cell is and of course the half equations that are used right throughout this topic. So opening statement here, Something we should all be familiar with are electrochemical cells or batteries. Now these batteries, these electrochemical cells are made up of two half cells. Now what actually goes on in those two half cells? Well, that's the basis of how they work. This is the redox part of it. Now a half cell is, well, usually made up of two components. I say usually, nine times out of 10, this is what you're going to see, but sometimes you are gonna get two different ions in solution. That's a separate tutorial, but standard, nine times out of 10, you're gonna get these two things. What I'm drawing here is the standard kind of setup for a half cell. First up, you've got like, I don't know, let's call it a beaker. If you made this in school or college, you'd be using a beaker. In the middle, what you've got is an electrode and then that beaker is filled with a solution. Now this solid electrode is a solid metal. I'm just gonna call that X. Now that X, like I said, is our electrode. The solution itself, very importantly, is a one mole per decimeter cube solution of those metal ions, so X ions. Now, of course, depending on the metal, it really depends on what ion you've got in there. So it could be X plus, so maybe Li plus or something like that, or it could be X2 plus, like copper 2 plus. So we've got a solid metal X and a one mole per decimeter cube solution of those X ions. That is nine times out of 10, what you'd get in a half cell, okay? Sometimes, like I said, we're looking at the redox between two ions in solution. Now for those exceptions, check out the tutorial on that, but I'm gonna plow on ahead with this kind of most common example of a half cell. So what's going on here? We've got a solid metal and we've got a solution of those metal ions. Well, what we have is an equilibrium being set up between that solid metal X and those aqueous ions of X in the solution. So it is an equilibrium, it is a dynamic equilibrium, okay? So that's set up between those two things. So for example here, a copper half cell. Now I'm gonna write the equation for this half cell, this half equation. Now this is the standard way in which we write all half equations, which is really important. So we always start with the oxidized version. In this case, it's the Cu2 plus ion that you'd have in that solution. So a one mole per decimeter cube solution is Cu2 plus Aq, plus two electrons, that's in equilibrium with the solid copper metal, okay? Now, of course, it's not always two electrons. It just so happens that Cu2 plus needs two electrons to make Cu. If you've got a one plus ion, you only need one electron and so on and so forth. So it's the number of electrons you need to transfer between Cu2 plus and Cu, the aqueous ions and the metal. So as I said, really importantly, we have to write them this way around if we're going to get through these questions in the exam paper. So oxidized version on the left, reduced version on the right. And if you're ever confused about which that is, just look at the oxidation numbers. We've got plus two for Cu2 plus and zero for Cu, the solid copper version, okay? So we've got oxidized version and reduced version. And that equilibrium can shift either way, okay? So what we've got here, if we've got some copper, and let's say depending on what it's attached to, because the other half cell that we've got, don't worry, we'll get to that. But depending on what it's attached to, this equilibrium can swing one way or the other. The copper could get oxidized to Cu2+, plus, or the Cu2+, plus could actually get reduced to Cu. So that's what, of course, an equilibrium is all about. It can go left, or it can go right. It can be oxidized, or it can be reduced, all right? Now, what's actually happening when we get this shift in equilibrium? What's happening when it goes one way? What's happening when it goes the other? So as I say, this equilibrium can shift depending what the other half cell that it's attached to is. It can go left or it can go right. We can have a forward reaction, or we can have a reverse reaction. So let's take a look at this forward reaction first. All right, this forward reaction, this is when reduction is happening. The Cu2 plus aqueous gains two electrons to become Cu. It's gone from a plus two oxidation state to a zero oxidation state in this particular example. 
So I'm just drawing out this half cell again so you can see exactly what's happening here, okay? So we've got our standard kind of beaker, if you like. We've got our central electrode there that's gonna be made out of copper. And underneath, we've got our one mole per decimeter cubed solution of copper ions, probably maybe copper sulfate or something like that. So what goes on during this reaction? Well, Cu2 plus ions in solution are actually turning into copper. So they're gonna be depositing themselves here. So this is copper, okay? Cu as our standard solid electrode in there. Now Cu2 plus ions, okay, are going to turn into copper. Now, how can they turn into copper? Well, they need to gain electrons. Where do those electrons come from? Well, those electrons come from the other half cell that we're gonna be attaching it to. So we're gaining electrons from the other half cell. The Cu2 plus joins this electrode, electrons come in from the other half cell and we make copper. So that's what's happening here during the forward reaction. And again, depending on what half cell you add it to, you know, we could get this forward reaction making copper and then the concentration of the solution will of course go down. So that's the forward reaction. That's when reduction is happening in this half cell. So electrons are being used up here, making copper from Cu2 plus. But what about the opposite? Well, the reverse reaction of course is oxidation. So we're going backwards here. Now, like I said, that half equation, we always have to write in the way that we did above, but we're just focusing on the reverse reaction here. So copper solid actually gets oxidized to Cu2 plus aqueous and two electrons. So it's literally the opposite of what's happening on the left-hand side there. So again, I'm just drawing out that half cell, beaker, solid copper electrode in the middle. And of course, we've got our one mole per decimeter cubed solution of copper two plus. So in here again, we've got our Cu and we've got our Cu2 plus aqueous in solution. Now what's happening here? Well, Cu is actually turning into copper 2 plus. So these Cu atoms, these Cu uh, solid atoms are actually turning into Cu2 plus in solution. Now what happens there is they're of course losing electrons. Oxidation is loss of electrons. So we're forming Cu2 plus. But what happens to the electrons? Well, the electrons build up inside this electrode here. And what happens is they go off to the other half cell, okay? So it's literally the opposite of what's happening in this half cell over here. So in reduction, we're actually forming copper. We're forming the metal and the electrons are coming in from the other half cell, forming that solid copper. In terms of the reverse reaction oxidation, again, depending on what other half cell it's attached to, then electrons build up and they are sent to the other half cell. So this process can happen. So what we have, okay, in these equilibria is oxidation or reduction happening, one or the other. In one half cell, reduction is taking place. There's a forward reaction going on. In another half cell, there's got to be oxidation happening because one thing is gaining electrons, the other thing is losing electrons. Now this wouldn't happen, of course, if you set up a whole cell, electrochemical cell, with two lots of copper because they're just, you know, their redox power is exactly the same. Nothing's going to happen. But if you put a different metal and metal ions in the other half cell, well, they have different redox powers. So one of them is going to be reduced. The other one is going to be oxidized and we get a flow of electrons from one side to the other. And that's what causes the current and we can measure the voltage difference between those, okay? So reduction happening one, oxidation happening the other. But I think the overall kind of messages here are, all right, generally nine times out of 10, we have a solid metal and it's ion in solution. Now, again, you know, there's so many of these, I'm not going to list them all here, but there are lots and lots of different ones. We set up an equilibrium. This is how we always write our half equations. Oxidized version on the left, reduced version on the right. Forward reaction is reduction. Backward reaction is oxidation. And of course, either of those things can happen depending on what other half cell that you attach these to, okay? So we'll be moving on now and talking about other cells or full cells, and of course, what's actually going on and balancing these reactions and stuff. So half cells and half equations, the fundamental basis of all electrochemistry.